Are you currently suffering from pain on the outside of your elbow that's aggravated with activities or exercises that involve gripping or twisting? Hey everyone, this is Dr. Zach Greenwood here at Performance Sport and Spine, and in today's video I'll be discussing tennis elbow. So the elbow joint is comprised of three bones, the humerus, the ulna, and the radius. And the common extensor tendon on the outside of the elbow where the muscles attach to the bone is often the site of complaint. So what does this condition feel like? What commonly presents as localized pain or tenderness on the outside of the elbow. You should be able to take your finger and place right on the spot of pain. And it's usually aggravated with activities such as twisting, gripping, or extension. So it affects one to three percent of the population and it's four to six times more common than golfer's elbow. So what's causing this tendon issue? Well, it's mechanical overload by repetitive use. And it's almost always after a spike in exercise or activity. For example, this is the capacity of your tendon and the load is here, you're okay. But let's say for instance, you start playing tennis three times a week when you haven't played in one year. Now the load goes above the capacity and that starts to irritate the tendon. So it can be an acute or chronic condition if this goes on for long enough. As well, some conditions are mild and some can be severely debilitating, which can greatly affect quality of life. So now we're going over some activity modifications that can help reduce the stress on the tendon and help calm it down. So with this tendon, if I fully straighten or extend my arm, I place some tension forces, as well as compress the tendon over the bone. So what happens if I slightly flex my arm or bend it, I can help reduce those compression forces, which irritates the tendon less. So another modification you can do is when you lift an object like this kettlebell, if your palm is faced back, it puts more stress on the outside of your arm than the inside. If we reverse our grip and have the palm face away from us, it places more stress on the inside or the non-irritated area. So when you lift, it helps kind of protect the outside, and this is a temporary modification that you can use. Also, it's probably a good idea to combine both these together. And then lastly, trying to reduce gripping and twisting by 30 to 50% to let the tendon calm down is also going to be beneficial. So a functional example of this is when you're carrying your grocery bags in, maybe do a little less per trip and keep your elbows slightly bent as you carry them in. So now we're going to go over the exercises or rehabilitation, which has been most effective for dealing with this condition. But there's four things to note. Some discomfort is normal. Acceptable pain probably ranges from 3 to 4 out of 10 on that oral pain scale. But the pain should calm down within 30 minutes and be no worse the next morning. Secondly, this is probably going to take months, not weeks. So expectations this can be a slow, incremental process. Thirdly, it needs to be individualized to each person as every tendon is different. And then lastly, we should not increase the load by more than 10% per week. So with this condition, the long finger extensors can be overactive. So a quick test I want you to do is make a fist and can you extend your hand or lift your hand up towards the ceiling without extending your fingers? If you find that when you lift your hand up or your wrist up, you want to lift your fingers out, that means the finger extensors are doing what the wrist extensors should and this motor control exercise will help. So for this exercise, make sure your elbow is bent and your one joint is bent, but your fingers are straight on a flat surface. Keeping your palm down, press your fingers out nice and controlled all the way and then return to the starting position. Work up to 10 reps before you add weight and make sure your thumb doesn't lift off the table or the surface. A couple errors is you don't want your fingers to bend as we demonstrate here, or you don't want your fingers to extend. So the only joint that should be moving is this joint and this joint. So as you press your fingers out, your palm flattens down, and then as you bring your fingers back, your fingers bend. So now for the isometrics. So again, your arms should be rested on a surface, and again, we wanna keep that elbow bent to reduce the compression forces of that tendon over the bone. And to find neutral wrist position, I want you just to make a fist before you add the weight. So once you've found that neutral position, add a light weight, and then you're gonna hold 30 to 60 seconds, or to tolerance, three to four reps, making sure to rest at least one minute between, and then increasing the weight over time. Do these every day, as long as the tendon recovers by the previous morning. So another isometric is using a band. So in a standing position with your elbow bent at 90 and your hand vertical with the band anchored around your foot, you're going to rotate your palm face down and slowly straighten your arm. And again, as you straighten or extend your elbow, it's going to put more compression. So you may want to initially pause and only go halfway and then build up tolerance. And then subsequent times work on increasing the range of motion to your current pain level 
But again, over time and probably weeks or months, the goal is to get all the way out to full extension. The same sets and dosage apply as the previous exercise. So pronation, supination. With your elbow bent and your forearm rested on a box or an object, hold a hammer or another object such as a broom or a dowel. Starting palm down, we're gonna rotate slow and controlled four to six seconds to palm face up. And then return to the starting position. Do this three to four times a week, three sets of 10 to 12 reps, making sure to rest two minutes between sets. So some common errors we see is to not go for the full range of motion. Over time, the goal is to get to 70 to 80 degrees in both supination and pronation. Don't start premature. Work on kind of stretching at end range. And then lastly, to increase the difficulty, you can just choke down on a little bit to make a longer lever arm. And again, repeat the previous exercise at a more intense capacity. So wrist extension. With your arm on the surface and your elbow bent and your wrist in neutral, grab a light weight. Bending your hand down towards the floor and then all the way up to the ceiling, slow and controlled, four to six seconds. Again, you should feel tension over the outside of your elbow. So for dosage, do three sets. Initially for week one to two, do 12 to 15 reps, waiting two minutes between sets. At week three or four, increase the weight so your reps are now eight to 12. And then at week five to six, increase the weight so your reps are at four to six. Do this every other day or four times a week. So for strength the rotator cuff, be in a face down position with your elbows and arms at 90. Rotate through your shoulders so your upper arms are parallel to the floor and then press up overhead to tolerance. This is quite difficult, so you may need to start by just rotating and pressing out a little bit. And then as you get stronger, press out farther. To increase the difficulty, grab light weights and repeat the same motion. Do three sets of eight reps three times a week. And then working on thoracic mobility or upper back mobility is important. So in a kneeling position with your outside leg up and the inside arm against the wall, place your opposite arm straight and then keeping your eyes on that moving arm, rotate as far as you can, maintaining eye contact to the moving arm and return to the starting position. Do two sets of 12 reps, trying to increase the range of motion each rep. Repeat on the opposite side. So for an examination and test, some things to be aware of. First is active range of motion. So assessing extension or strain your elbow, flexion or bending your elbow, supination or rotating your palm up, and then pronation or rotating your palm down. Also, global upper limb strength is important. So bicep, tricep, and deltoid. So the best single test we have for this is assessing grip strength objectively. So doing this initially and over time to track progress is very important. One thing to note is that in a flexed elbow position, the strength should be five to 10% more than with the elbow fully straightened or extended. And then common tests for assessing this are Cozen and Manley's, which assess wrist extension and finger extension respectively, have poor diagnostic value as the sensitivity and specificity has never been clinically validated. And then a quick neurological exam to check the median, ulnar, and radial nerve is can the person do a rock, paper, and scissors. And then to check the anterior intraosseous, can they do the OK sign? And then the posterior intraosseous, can they do the thumbs up? So there is some good news with tennis elbow. This study found that 80% of people improved at one year despite treatment. So it's really important to find that level of tolerance that you can handle and then increase over time. However, reoccurrences are common. So load tolerance and the sunburn analogy. So every tendon is different, but the sunburn analogy can really help people understand. So let's say you go out for eight hours one day and you get a bad sunburn. And then you go the next day and you get more sun. The skin might blister and cause real bad pain for a week or two. Tendons are the same way. If you do more than they can handle and they're irritated, and the next day you load them more, they're just gonna get more irritated and put you out of commission for a week or two. So making sure that you load the tendon, but making sure it has time to calm down is incredibly important. So a good rule of thumb is when you're doing heavy loads, do them every other day, and you should return to baseline by the next morning. 
So risk factors for this condition are manual workers, repetitive tasks, smoking, elevated BMI as it increases cytokines, which is a pro-inflammatory that can disrupt and damage collagen, genetics. So two medications to be aware of are fluoroquinolones anywhere from eight days to six months prior to onset of pain, or statins 10 months prior to pain. In addition, increased levels of cholesterol or hypothyroidism may also be risk factors. So other diagnoses that may present as outside or lateral elbow pain that need to be ruled out are, so the first is cervical spine or the neck. So active range of motion, the orthopedic test spurling and arm squeeze, and then a high index neural examination. So radial tunnel syndrome, so this would present with pain with resisted supination, there'd be no muscle weakness, and there may be positive neurodynamic tests. Osteochondritis desiccans. This is where a small part of cartilage in the elbow separates from the bone, and it's extremely important to rule out. It's most commonly found in adolescent athletes that are in overhead or repetitive sports, usually in the second decade. The most common are throwers or gymnastics, and it can go from stable to unstable, so it's very important to catch early. CT scans or MRI are the best. So posterior lateral instability. So the person may present with a giving away feeling, clicking or popping. There may be a history of trauma and there's often positive orthopedic tests for instability of the elbow. So fracture, most common is the radial head. Often there's bruising and or swelling, a history of trauma and an inability to extend or fully straighten the arm. Rheumatoid arthritis, so the stiffness greater than 30 minutes in the morning, the three S's, stiffness, squeezing, and swelling. Often this affects the joints bilaterally and other joints are involved, most commonly the hands. Osteoarthritis, so this is less common than RA. Imaging can be helpful. There may be locking and there may be pain at end range and it's important to note that it progresses from lateral or the outside to the inside over time and it's four times more common in males. And the plica, now this is the remnant of the synovial fold. It's often painful with twisting. There may be snapping and clicking over the radial head. And if it's symptomatic, arthroscopic surgery is required. Thank you so much for watching our video on tennis elbow. Really hope you found it was helpful. If you did, please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to check out our other videos.